the platform. Yeah, right. Hello. Is that you, Frank? We're still coming. You 
are Lord. You are all I'm living for. You are King of everything. I want my life to praise you. 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 Come on. Let's do this. Be bold. Oh, no. Be bold. Sorry, be bold. Sorry. Be bold. 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 Be Yeah. 
you can. Tell everybody get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Run to the camp. Tell everybody get ready. Get ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to take the stand? Are you ready? Are you ready to take the stand? Are you ready?
him right now. Somebody just give a shout. Somebody ought to give a wave. Somebody ought to give a glory shout to him. How great, how great, how great is the God that we serve. Amen. I'm so thrilled to have the men back up here on the platform. Don't be in a hurry about leaving, guys. Just hang out here with me. Okay, I love having these guys up here. I love it when the women get a chance to come up here. And you know what? It shows me more and more that we're going to get back to where this church needs to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn around tell somebody you love them and you can be seated. Amen. Say, I love you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say that. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know many of our men are on the platform. So anybody listen good because I'm, I'm looking at the platform too. I want to know how many of the men and the women in this house have served in the military. Would you please stand? You guys up here, just lift your hand. Served in the military. How many of you? If you're out here, stand. If you served in the military, stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you back there. God bless you. God bless you back there. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We know this is Memorial Day. I was telling my daughter yesterday on the phone, I, I said, you know, we're going to celebrate Memorial Day tomorrow. I'm gonna, I kind of told her a few of the things that I'm going to do. And then uh, she says, well, Daddy, what about, uh, she says, what is Memorial Day? I said, well, we recognize those that gave their life for, the, uh, for the defending our country. That's what Memorial Day is all about. Yes. She says, well, she knew I, I was in the Army. She says, well, Daddy, what about you? I said, well, that's Veterans Day. We recognize us veterans that made it back. We didn't die during the, uh, our service time. And, and, and praise God, uh, we want to, even though this is Memorial Day, I'm recognizing those that served our country. And I appreciate you all. And I thank you. Give a hand clap for all those that spent time in the military. And gave, and gave their, their, their time so we can be free. I said so we can be free. Can I hear an amen? amen. And then we're going to recognize those uh, that, that, that lost their lives so we can be free. We're going to talk about that in a little. But I just want you to know how much I appreciate each and every one of you. And, and we're going to have a chance to uh, give glory to God and find out uh, those special events, those special things that took place. And why? We celebrate Memorial Day 
today. I think it's a very special time. And we don't want to find. We don't want to just make this a holiday where we have hamburgers and hot dogs and 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 a, and a day off work. But we need to never forget the purpose of Memorial Day. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Well, give give the Lord a praise if you would. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you're looking great this morning. I, well, thank you. Praise God. The men up here just awesome, incredible, standing tall. If your man's up here, some woman ought to just give a big shout right now. Okay, good, good. I'm sure you're proud that your husband is up here standing in the gap and taking a place, willing to get back on the platform and sing. I think it's awesome when a bunch of men's voices are echoing uh, the praises of the Lord together. It's always special to me. Can I hear an amen? amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Is anybody visiting with us for the first time this morning? Anybody first time Faith Outreach Center? God bless you. Thank you for being here, brother. Appreciate it. Amen. There in the back, God bless you. Thank you. If you'd be so kind as to fill out that visitor's card that we just handed you, that visitor's booklet, tell you all about our ministry, fill out that card and turn it into the bookstore out in the lobby after the service. Uh, we'd love to give you a CD of one of our services. Most of all, thank you for choosing Faith Outreach Center as your place of worship this morning. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Ushers, will you come? We're going we're gonna to take an, offer, uh, an offering. An opportunity to give to the Lord this morning. How many of you know the Lord loves a cheerful giver? Amen. And other ways ought to give hardly as to the Lord. Amen. Because he's already given more to us than we deserve. We give that portion back, that tithe, that 10% back to him. And he said, if we'll do that, Malachi chapter 3. He said, test me now and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings that you can't contain. So if we're obedient to God... Uh, we can't ever go wrong. He'll always take care of us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lord, we thank you again for the privilege to come into your house today. We ask God you bless each gift and each giver. Uh, bless, Lord God, as we give offerings in the, into the storehouse and the good ground of this ministry that we can continue to reach around the world with the gospel message. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
That deserves a big hand clap and a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give me an F. Help me, man. Amazing grace. Oh, how sweet. How sweet the sound. Oh, that saved a wretch. Well, just like me, oh, I once, I once was lost, oh, yes, but now I'm found. Well, I was blind, oh, but now I see. Oh, well, amazing grace. Sweet, oh, the sound, oh, yes, that I saved a wretch who just like me. Oh, I was, oh, was lost, oh, yes, but now I'm found. Well, I was blind, oh, but now. Shining as oh, the sun With no last days Oh, well, to sing my God's praise Oh, well, and when oh, we first begun Praise God, hallelujah Oh, 
guys y'all can come down praise the lord hallelujah how many of you how many of you think is sometimes we just need to sing an old hymn that will make the difference amen i've watched so many of you got your hands lifted up while we were singing amazing grace it brought back some memories it brought back some thoughts that you've touched your heart can i hear an amen, amen. praise god praise god again i appreciate the band so awesome this morning the praise team up here our men singing praise god hallelujah we're going to minister for a few moments. Are you ready for the word this morning? Amen. amen. How many of you are ready? How many of you are ready for the word? There was only about four that said amen. Okay, good, good, good. I'm ready to give it to you. The children can be dismissed. Thank you. Children can be dismissed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to give you just a little bit of history of Memorial Day. Why do we celebrate Memorial Day? What is this, this thing, Memorial Day? Memorial Day really means remember or look back or don't forget. Is anybody with me? How many of you know that's also a covenant word? Do this in remembrance. Look back. Don't forget. Remember. Amen? <clears throat> so we need to be sensitive to that. On, on June 28, 1968, Congress passed a Uniform Monday Holiday Act which moved Memorial Day from May 30th uh, to Monday to have a long weekend. How many of you know it's okay to have a long weekend, but don't forget what the weekend's about? Did anybody hear me? It's okay. Well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be off on Monday. Uh, well, that's great. You know, we're gonna have, we're gonna, we, we can have fun, and that's good. But let's not forget the purpose, all the people that paid the price, amen, for our freedom, that we can have a long weekend. I suppose for many people, Memorial Day has become simply a, a kickoff for a summer season. It's the starting of summer. Some people think Memorial Day is just uh, barbecues and picnics and outdoor, uh, outdoor events. But how many of you know it's okay to do that as long as we don't forget the purpose? I said, let's please don't forget the purpose. Many people died, gave their life millions of people gave their life so we can be free today so we can worship in spirit and in truth so we don't uh, we're not under persecution when we come and sing praises to the lord like many other countries praise god we still are free amen uh congress uh, proposed to move it to monday uh, so uh, so we can recognize and have an observation of this special event and it would add to our our time to recognize those that paid the price. Uh, sadly, uh, it would seem that some people have forgotten the actual reason of Memorial Day. Just another holiday. It's sad to me as the holidays all the way through the year have been disrespected in many cases, not to have the meetings that they once had, uh, but we uh, have lost sensitivity sometimes uh, to the things that really count. And I would like us to be reminded today that someone paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Yes, Hallelujah. Our nation observes uh, Memorial Day way back in 1868 when General uh, John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief, of the Grand Army of the Republic named May 30th as a special day. We still often refer to uh, Memorial Day as Declaration Day. Anybody ever heard that word, Declaration Day? If, you can, if, you, if that rings a bell, raise your hand. Declaration Day. And what does that mean? To decorate the graves of the fallen soldiers. To decorate, to go and put reefs, to go and be able to uh, put flowers and remember, never forget, remember, 
my mom, my dad, they're at National Cemetery up in Bushnell. And, uh, and when I went, I went by there, just uh, uh, did, a, did a, a funeral service uh, there, went by my mom and dad's uh, uh, gravestone, and just thousands of gravestones all over National Cemetery of men and women that served in the military, and gave, many of them gave their life uh, for our freedom. It's an awesome place to go. It just makes you feel almost of hush, of respect, uh, when you walk through there and you see all those mighty uh, people that paid the price that I can walk freely today, that I can have the freedom that I have, they paid the ultimate price. Amen? Amen. Uh, to honor the graves of the Union soldiers, uh, they, uh, they, they made this declaration that we would have a Memorial Day. Uh, the observation of Memorial Day was started in this country in remembrance of those who died in the wars between the states since that time, uh, those who have uh, sacrificed their lives in the service of our nation and in any war, uh, they were added to the list. Uh, but since 9-11, how many of you remember 9-11? If I say 9-11, how many of you, that rings a bell for you. It's a, it, was a, it was a tragedy. It was an attack against our country. It's when the, tw the twin tires uh, were destroyed in New York. I remember where I, where I was when I heard, the, good, when I heard the, uh, the news. Went up and watched it on television that very morning. And, and, and with great uh, shock, uh, found we watched the other airplane go into the second tower. How many of you remember some of that? Oh, listen, we'll never forget it. We'll never forget it. And after 9-11, the churches filled up. After 9-11, people came giving respect to God, but it didn't last very long. We, didn't, it, 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 we, we, we lost memory pretty quick, and everybody went back to their routine. The churches started uh, dwindling down again. Uh, listen, uh, church, we need to always remember those that paid the price. Since 9-11, there has been uh, more mention of those who died in the line of duty. In, a, in, in, in the uh, emergency service, uh, the firemen, the policemen, the rescue people, uh, the medical personnel that paid the price to all them people and still doing it today because we've had so many tragedies in our country. And so we can't forget them. The ones that, were, that, 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 that died and fell and were fallen, uh, that were killed uh, because they paid the ultimate price for our freedom, I want to say praise the Lord. Those additions uh, have been uh, good in the harmony, uh, which uh, origin, our original purpose, setting aside one day, now it ex it's expanded to the first responders and to the, those uh, that were so gracious to lay their life down uh, to save a life. Amen? You see, it's up to us, church. Listen, our children need to never forget what Memorial Day is. Our families need to know. It's up to us, it's up to our schools to teach uh, the next generation the meaning of this day. And they need to learn our history and the sacrifices that have been made for the freedom that we enjoy today. How many of you know we enjoy our freedom today because there was people that laid down their life that wasn't afraid, that paid the price and died uh, that we can have freedom today. Can I hear an amen? amen. And listen, we need to never forget. Please, uh, never forget. And all too often... Uh, we take these things for granted. Don't take for granted the price that was paid for our freedom, not only in our country, but also in our relationship with the Lord, the price that was paid. The ultimate people all down through history that paid the price that you and I can walk in victory, that we can have joy, that we can uh, say, yes, I'm still in a free country. Uh, until you go to a, another country that's not free, until you go to a communist country and try to uh, preach your gospel or try to serve the Lord and see the persecution that comes up against you and the people uh, because they don't believe like we do, you'll come home and you'll say, Lord, thank you that I live in the land of the free. Thank you, Lord, that I still live in a free country. There's a lot of people complaining about our country, but we still have the best country in the world. Praise God. We still have the freedom uh, to be able to be uh, what God has called us to be. The future of any nation depends on its citizens having a sense of history and their place in it. Every one of us have a place in our country to keep the history going. Every one of us can serve in an area that makes a difference. Every one of us can find somebody that we can reach out and we can say, I care about you and I, I want to lift you up and I want to encourage you. 
Is anybody with me this morning? Oh, listen, don't take for granted uh, the, 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 the relationships in your life. Don't take for granted the freedom that you have. Don't take for granted uh, the fact uh, th- th- that you can still uh, be strong and, and, and be a witness and, and you can still uh, have freedom uh, to live the life uh, that you know that you, d- you desire to live. I think we never should take it for granted. Now I'm reminded of my mother's brother, my uncle. My mother's brother was an was a Air Force pilot in World War II. He got shot down in 1943, the same year that I was born. And so I have a family member that I can say, you know, he paid the price for my freedom. I remember my dad served in World War II as an infantry soldier in the foxholes of France and Germany. He came home with PTSD, and we all lived with that because we didn't know what PTSD was. We never heard of that phrase. We just called it shell-shocked. We just said, well, he, he, he was shell-shocked from, uh, from being in the war and acted different and had nightmares and, and woke up in the middle of the night running through the house screaming. Uh, but, you know, we just said, well, that, that's, that was just part of the war. Now we have a name for it. Is anybody with me? But my dad served our country. My brother-in-law uh, was in the Air Force as a loadmaster on the C-5 and the, 130, and, and the C-130 aircraft. He was a loadmaster. Uh, went to Vietnam many times to get the troops out and get the troops in. And in, during that process, he also got sprayed with Agent Orange. And then he died because of Agent Orange uh, destroyed his lungs and destroyed his heart. My covenant brother, assistant pastor, Ed Kuhn. Some of you might remember Ed. He was my dearest friend in the world. I served the Lord with me for 16 years the whole time dealing with PTSD because he was a, he, he was a soldier in Vietnam, experienced some incredible uh, things there. And because he fought in Vietnam, he died of lung and heart failure from being sprayed with Agent Orange. If we had time, we could talk about different family members that maybe you've had that have paid the price for our freedom today. Can I hear an amen? amen? We could go on and on about those that laid down their life for our freedom. Some of you have loved ones that paid the ultimate price. Some of you have family members uh, maybe back uh, n- n- not, not just in, in, in your lifetime but before that like my uncle. But they paid the price. The ultimate price for our country. In fact, if you, how many of you can think right now as I'm sharing these experiences, how many of you could think of somebody in your family or a loved one that lost their life because they defended, the, 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 because they was fighting for the freedom of our country? Hands up all over the congregation. Amen. We don't want to forget them. We never want to forget them because they paid the price for our freedom. But let's look for a few moments at the ones that paid the price for our spiritual freedom. How many of you think there was those that paid the price for our spiritual freedom? When I walk through the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, I find so many people that were willing to walk by faith and not by sight, willing to lay down their life because they knew that the Word of God was true. They must be, they must be remembered too. You know why? Because when we get to heaven, we're going to meet them again. We get to heaven, we're going to be standing there waiting to greet us, and they paid the ultimate price, and they died that you and I can have the freedom to walk in victory today. We must remember, too. It's important to set aside time to remember the sacrifices that have been made for us, for it's also part of our thanks to God for the spiritual freedom that we have today. The spiritual freedom. I'm free. Praise God Almighty, I'm set free. No matter what happens here in this life, I know I got a home in heaven. I know Jesus paid the ultimate price. He made it available for me. He said, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, you shall be also. What a victory. He said, whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Setting aside... The days and the objects of remembrance. 
we can uh, go through the Word of God and we can find that many times in the Word of God there were memorials that was set up uh, that, uh, that the, pe- the children of God should never forget. God gave them a covenant that they should remember every year some of the things uh, that He provided for them so they wouldn't forget. A church, there's just some things we need not to forget. There are some things we need to remember. Amen? And I'll give you a few of them in Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. It said, God established the rainbow as a sign of his covenant with Noah that he would not flood the earth again to destroy all flesh. It was a reminder. It was a memorial. It was a memory of both God's judgment in the past and his promises for the future. Anytime, we, how many of you love it when you see a rainbow? Seems like we always, always recognize it. Uh, you step out of your house after a rain, and there might be a full rainbow uh, that stretches all the way across the sky. And you look and say, oh, you run in the house and say, honey, come on out. I want you to see the rainbow. How many of you know it's just, it's just not a pretty design that God made so you can say how pretty it is? How many of you know the rainbow is a covenant promise? That he destroyed the earth in the book of Genesis because of man's disobedience. But yet he said, I'll never destroy the earth again with a flood. Because the rainbow is the promise. Somebody say the promise. Aren't you glad that God gives us promises? And our promises are yea, that's yes, and amen, that's so be it. And we have a guarantee with God that he has some promises for us. And he used different men in the word of God uh, to, uh, to be strong and to be steadfast, unmovable to him. That the promises will always be all the way through for us today. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13, it says, The Lord being about his last, pl- brought about his last plague to Egypt. How many of you know because of the Egyptians' disobedience, worshiping all these other gods, and he wouldn't let God's people go. God brought plagues upon the Egyptians uh, that would make them realize of his power and his anointing. With results in Pharaoh's finally releasing the children of Israel from their enslavement. Their enslavement, but God cared. and God uh, heard their cries. God heard, uh, heard their voices cry out to him day and night. And he said, I'm going to set my people free. The firstborn would be killed unless the blood of the lamb would, would, would be spread on the doorpost and the lintel. God told Moses, you tell all the people that the death angel's coming through because the Egyptians are in such rebellion. The firstborn of every one animal and, and, and the firstborn child of, of, every, of every family is going to die. But if the Israelites would put blood on their doorposts and on their lintel of a spotless lamb, when a death angel passes over, they would be spared. How many of you thank God for his promises, for his word to be true? He knows how to take care of his own. And the Lord, Lord then established the feast of Passover, which we celebrated that at Easter, Passover. Uh, when, uh, when Passover came and, and, and the blood was applied in the doorpost and the lintel, uh, it would be a remembrance. It would be a, me- a memorial every year that they would remember the feast of Passover as a yearly reminder of this event and the freedom that resulted from God's promise. How many, of you glad, how many of you glad God's got some promises and you can draw from them? Because every promise in the book is yours. Every promise in the book is mine. Hallelujah. I can say, Lord, thank you for the promise of, of divine health. Thank you for the promise of healing. Thank you for the promise of deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your love that's unfailing love, unconditional. Thank you, Lord, for the promise that you give us uh, that you'll watch over me day and night. Angels have been dispatched in our behalf to watch over us. Thank you for the promises, Lord. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And then in Joshua, chapter 3, records the miraculous crossing of, of the Jordan River on dry ground. Can you imagine? It was in the springtime when the flood waters were high and and the Jordan River was at its peak, overflowing the banks. 
And God said, I want you to take all these Israelites, 6,000 Israelites, and, 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 and cross over the Jordan River into this new promised land. And when he took the Ark of the Covenant, and the, and, the, and the Levites had the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. And when they put their foot on, uh, into the Jordan River, uh, the water stopped flowing. And it piled up on one side. And it flowed out of the way on the other side until the wind blew through and dried up the land. And they crossed over on dry land across the Jordan River. God directed the Levites to carry the Ark of the Covenant into the river. And as their feet touched the water, touched the river, the water stopped flowing. And the river bed dried up. It was dry ground. A man from each tribe then collected a large group of stones from the middle of the river bed. And those were stacked up on the outside of the river on the other side where they crossed over to represent a uh, the, the, the Jordan memorial. So every generation that saw those stacks of stones would say, what's that about, Mom? What's that about, Dad? And they would tell the story about the time that God stopped the flow of the river, dried it up on dry ground, and brought them across. The purpose was uh, for that, that when the further gen when the next generations, the children would ask about, what's those stack of stones? The story of the crossing would be retold. And it was important to remember their history. I mean, I think it's important for us to remember our history today. I'm really concerned about our school system when I think of the histories that's trying to be taken out of our history books. They're trying to destroy the history because it's, it's not politically correct anymore. Uh, uh, the things that was part of, our, uh, part of our history that we need to understand and know about. They don't want anybody to tell it anymore because some of it don't sound good. But church, let me say this. There's some things in the Bible that don't sound good either, but it's part of our history. There's some things, uh, there's some things that if you and I would have wrote it, we probably wouldn't have wrote that, but it's part of our history. And we need to understand how important that is. Then I'm reminded of the book of Esther. How many of you remember that book? The, the book of Esther recorded the plot of Haman, a high official of King Ahasuerus to destroy uh, the Jews uh, living in Persia. And the plot was reversed uh, by the effect of one person, Queen Esther. And, and, the, and the Feast of Purim was the, uh, was the feast that she went to before the king to turn the whole situation around and spare all of the Jewish nation. Is anybody following me? You might want to read about that later if you're not, if you're not sure and doesn't bring a, bring a bell with you. Read the book of Esther. It's not a long book, but it's a powerful book. And Queen Esther went to the Feast of Purim, which is still celebrated today as a memorial. The Jewish people remember that. Remember that Esther, one woman, saved all the nation of Israel. At first she said she couldn't do it. She said, I might get killed if I go before the king. I might not be received. And she was told by Mordecai, listen, if you don't go before the king to speak in behalf of the nation of Israel, God will raise up somebody else. But for such a time as this, you were created. Oh, listen, beloved, for such a time as this, hey, you've been created for things. Do you know that? Do you know God created you to do some biblical things, some spiritual things that will change the lives of maybe a nation, change the lives of your family, change the lives of your children? You were created to do some things and stand strong in the midst of, uh, of this deteriorating generation that we live in today. God's still looking for some Esthers that would just dare to believe God because there's a memorial that reminds them today what Esther did that saved the whole nation. I'm reminded of David's mighty men. I don't know if you've ever, ever done a study on David's. He had 600 mighty men. They were ruthless. These men would do anything. They were tough. They would stand strong. One man stood in a peat patch with a sword in his hand, and the enemy came in all day long, and he stood there with his sword just bringing people down as they tried to take over the peat patch. And at the end of the day, his hand cleaved to the sword, and he couldn't let it go because he was swinging it all day long. 
I'm reminded of one of David's and two of David's mighty men that would cross the enemy lines just to give David a drink of water from the old well back home because they knew he loved that fresh running water that was at the well. They crossed the enemy lines. They went back into the, uh, into the home territory. Uh, they grabbed a container of water, and they brought it back because David said several times, boy, I would love to have a drink from the old water at the well. I would love to have a drink from the well back home. And they crossed the enemy lines, snuck in at night, and got over there and brought the water back. And when David got that water, he said, the price was paid by these men. They could have got killed crossing the enemy lines, but they did it because they loved me. He said, I can't drink it. And he poured it out as a drink offering to the Lord. Is anybody with me? Oh, listen. These are memorials. These are biblical accounts that we need to never forget. We can't forget the three Hebrew children. The three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel, oh, praise God, that would not bow and they would not burn. They said, oh, the king said, uh, you, you, you Hebrew boys, uh, you're going to have to bow to my idol. All the whole nation bows to me and bows to, uh, to, my, uh, to my idol that I created. And I want you to bow. They said, oh, king, we're not going to bow. They said, we're not bowing to your idol. We only bow to one God, and that's Jehovah God. We only bend our knee to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We can't bow to your idol. And he said, if you don't bow to my idol, I'll throw you in the fire and be burned. And they said, oh, king, my God will deliver us. But if he don't, we're still not bowing. How many of you know, sometimes, church, we've got to be resolute on how we feel. Sometimes we just got to be that strong in the word. We just got to say, I know who I'm believing. I know who I'm believing, and I'm persuaded he's able to keep me until that day. And no matter what, I'm not bowing to the circumstances of the world. I'm a, I'm a child of the Most High God. And the Hebrew children said they wouldn't bow. And, when, and, and he gave them another chance. And when all the people bowed down before the, uh, before the uh, idol, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow. And he said, put them in the fiery furnace. And heat that fiery furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been before. And it was so hot when they threw him in the fire, some of the king's, uh, some of Nebuchadnezzar's men got consumed by the fire. And evidently there must have been a, a, a glass over the door where they could see in because as they threw him in the fiery furnace and the blazes and the flames were blazing, uh, uh, somebody looked in, in there and said, didn't we put three men in that fire? And they said, yes, I said, there's four in there now. And as they looked in, in, in there, the form of the fourth. How many of you know who the fourth was? How many of you knew who the fourth man was? Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, showed up in that fiery furnace. And they opened up that furnace and they let the, the fire calm down and they brought him out. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't even smell like smoke. Their, hairs, their hair wasn't scorched and they, uh, there, was, uh, there wasn't any, any residuals from that fire. Because Jesus went in the fire with him. You know, it says, it says in Isaiah 43 that God called you and he knows you by name. He said, when you go through the water, it will not overtake you. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. How many of you are glad God's promises are there for me and for you? These are memorials. We can't forget them. I said, we can't forget them. Can I hear an Amen. Then I'm reminded in the New Testament, we find uh, that uh, in, in the book of Acts, uh, of, uh, of, of communion is done as a memor memorial to never forget the covenant through Jesus Christ. When we talk about communion, that's a memorial. When we take communion, it's a remembrance of what all Jesus did. When we gather at the table and, have, and break bread and we take the cup, we're saying, Lord, this is your covenant promised to us and it's a memorial to us and we won't forget it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul explains the purpose and the procedure of the Lord's Supper and Communion. He explains its history and its meaning by uh, citing the words of Jesus so we will remember and we'll never forget the ultimate price that was paid. When we take communion, it's a memorial that his blood was shed and his body was broken. And he's the resurrection and the life. 
And it's a, memori- it's a memorial to us always to remember. We can't forget that Peter, in John 21, questioned Jesus about how he would die when Jesus was talking about John the Beloved. He said, Peter, if John stays till I come again, what is that to you? And we know John did stay. It's a two-edged sword. John did stay because that same John wrote the, uh, the, uh, wrote the revelation on the Isle of Patmos. And in that revelation, he gave the story about how he remained until Jesus came back again. Is anybody with me? What about Paul? What about Apostle Paul preaching the gospel and sharing the good news? And they told him to keep quiet, but he, he couldn't hold back. He said, I had to preach this gospel. So they took him outside the city, city and stoned him and left him for dead. Being stoned outside the city, left for dead. That's how many stones were thrown. That's how his body was beaten. That's how, uh, that's how much destruction was done to his body. And after they all left, God gave him his strength. And he got up and he walked back into the city. And he finished that sermon. I think Paul walked back into that synagogue where he was preaching before they threw him out and stoned him. He said... Where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? And I think he'd finished that message. We can't forget. We can't forget the ones that paid the price. Is anybody with me? I said we can't forget. What about Stephen? If I say Stephen, how many of you know that name? We find Stephen first in, in, in the sixth chapter of Acts where uh, they chose Stephen as one of the deacons. One of the ones that would wait on tables. One of the ones that would take care of the widows. Stephen, a man full of the Holy Spirit, full of the anointing of God. Now Stephen preaches the gospel. He makes everybody mad. They take him outside and he's a martyr for the cause of Christ. This is before the Apostle Paul gets saved. So Paul's standing there with Stephen's jacket, Stephen's coat over his arm as he's watching them stone Stephen to death. Before uh, Paul got saved in Acts chapter 9. Stephen. That died as a martyr. After being stoned to death. And looking up into heaven. And saying Lord forgive them. For they know not what they do. And Jesus giving him a standing ovation. Saying Stephen. You ran a good race. You finished your, your course. Come home. I'm waiting for you. Stephen's the only one I know. That got a standing ovation from Jesus. How many of you think that's an ultimate victory? The greatest sacrifice of love was Jesus himself. The greatest memorial that we have is Jesus himself. He paid the ultimate price. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Think about it. His only begotten son. Brother Henny was sharing one day about his sons, and he's got two incredible sons that just love, love, love their dad. They serve him in a mighty way as they work together. And Henny made this statement. It made me think what he said. He says, I'm not sure. I couldn't give one of my sons as an ultimate sacrifice. But God did. God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life because he paid the ultimate price. We all know that scripture, John 3, 16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But how many many of us know 17? 17, that's the one after 16, amen? Here it is. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn us. He didn't come to pull us down. He didn't come to fault us. But that the world through him might be saved. Through Jesus Christ, we can be born again. Through Jesus Christ, we can have a home for eternity in heaven. The Bible says, if in this life only in Christ, of all men, we're most miserable. If all we have is a relationship with Christ for this life, and we don't recognize he paid the ultimate price for our eternal victory. Of all men we're most miserable. But praise God as a believer. We know that Jesus paid the ultimate price. That we can have a home for eternity. We can live forever. We can live for eternity. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And if he's gone to prepare a place. He's coming again. To receive us. 
unto himself. Can I hear an amen? amen? Listen, when we think about biblical memorial things, I think about all these things uh, that happen so I can have victory, all these things so I can know that God loves me just so much. In John 15, 13, greater love has none than this, Jesus said. Greater love has none than this, that to lay it for one to lay down his life for his brother. Lay down his life for his brother. Do you know in the military, uh, the Marines, they connect as a brotherhood. Do you know in the Army, uh, the, the, group, the group that I was with, Special Operations Group out at McDill to stop the missile crisis in Cuba, there was a bonding, there was a connection that we would always, we, it was so close you'd almost be willing to lay down your life for your brother. In fact, you would lay down your life. You would stand in the gap for him so he wouldn't get shot. You would take a bullet for him because there was a brotherhood. How many of you know that's how we ought to be with each other? There ought to be a connection. There ought to be a brotherhood. There ought to be a love for each other. That we're willing to say, I'm going to, I, I'm going to die for you if that's what it takes. But Jesus died for all of us. Nobody has to die for somebody else because Jesus died for us and paid the ultimate price. Amen. You're my friends if you do whatever I command, Jesus said in John 15, 14. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master's doing. But I've called you friends. How many of you like that song we sing, I'm a friend of God? How many of you know that you're a friend? How many friends of God do I have here? Oh, praise God, if you're born again, y'all lift your hand. If you know him as your personal Savior, y'all lift your hand. Hey, you're a friend of God. He said, no longer do I call you a servant, for servants don't know what the master's doing. Uh, but I call you my friends. For all things that I heard from the Father, I made it known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. How many of you know a lot of people say, uh, uh, when I found Jesus, how many of you know you didn't find him, he found you? How many of you know Jesus wasn't lost? You and I were lost. He said, when I found you, praise God, when I found you, I was desperate and he found me. I was in trouble and he reached down to miry clay and picked me up and set me on a rock and established me. I wasn't looking for him and he was searching for me. Hallelujah. But he said, but when I chose you, he says, uh, you didn't choose me, but I chose you for the appointment uh, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll give it to you. How many of you think that's a big deal right there? Whatever you should ask, whatever you should ask. I'll give it to you. He said, these things I commanded you that you love one another. Oh, let's never forget. Let's never forget. Every time we have communion, it's a reminder. It's a memorial of all that God did through his son, Jesus Christ. And he gave us the power of the Holy Spirit that there's no excuse that we can live a victorious life. And then there in Hebrews chapter 11, I don't have time to go through all the, all the memories we have there, in there, but it's the faith walkers, the trophy case of God. And here it is. By faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, uh, Moses, Rahab, the harlot. Ooh, 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 the harlot? Oh, yeah. Uh, she's, won, uh, she's won the victory women. Uh, she's one uh, that was willing to, sa to, uh, to save uh, all the spies. She was the one that was willing to say, uh, we know that your God's a big God. And they promised her that they would spare her. And if you go to Matthew chapter 1, uh, you'll find in the genealogy and the lineage of Jesus, you'll find Rahab in there. And then there's Gideon and Samson and David and Samuel and the prophets. And the scripture says these all died by faith. Just like we must never forget those that paid the ultimate price for our freedom in our country. We have a great country because people were willing to die that you and I can be free. And those that lay down their life for, to keep our freedom today and still paying the price today. But we must never forget those that paid the price as we walk by faith and as we trust God. And we look to Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. 
And so we can run this race with confidence. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe we can run the race and we can finish it? Paul said, I've run a good race. I've finished my course. We can run this race with confidence because we have the example of these heroes that went before us. And beloved God, and they believed God and trusted Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews chapter 12, and I'm closing with this. Verses 1 through 2. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every sin, which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us has endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down the right hand of God the Father at the throne. Can I hear an amen from somebody? Oh, let me say this to you, church. We got to always remember. I'm going to always remember the ones that paid the price on Memorial Day and other days too. But I'm also going to remember the ones that paid the price that followed Jesus Christ even unto death and was willing to stand and believe God. And now they're reaping the reward in heaven. And let me say this, unless you are born again, unless you've had a personal experience with him, you'll be separated from God. This isn't about being a good person or a bad person. This isn't about how many people I can help. This is about having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there'll be something big inside of you that'll change forever. When I put my hand in the nail scarred hand of Jesus, it changed my life forever. My whole life changed. Maybe you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart this morning. I'd like to believe that every person here is born again. But I would like to also give you the opportunity, if not, if you're not sure, if you're not sure if you would die tonight, that you would, uh, that, that you would have a home in heaven, uh, that you would automatically be, uh, be ushered out of this uh, dimension into the heavenly dimension where Jesus is waiting for you. If you're not sure about that, then you can ask Jesus to come into your heart right now. Maybe you're a Christian. Maybe you used to serve God, but you kind of let things uh, uh, get loose with you, and you're not where you should be anymore, and you're willing to say, well, I'm coming back, Lord. I'm coming back. Is there anybody here right now would say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not where I should be with God, but I want to get there today. I want Jesus to be big in my life. If that's you, raise your hand right now. Then I'm believing that everybody in this house knows the Lord. Is there somebody back there? Somebody got their hand up? God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else by the, by the raised hand? Say, me too. I'm not where I should be with God, but, but Pastor, I'm going to get it right right now. I don't want one more day to go without being where I need to be with him. Stand with me, if you will, church, please. Esma, would you come down here? and I'm going to ask my brother to step out of the aisle that raised his hand back here. And meet Esmond down here. He's going to lay hands on you and pray for you. He's just going to ask God to strengthen you. Walk with you. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. The greatest day in my life was when I put my hand in, in the nail-scarred hand of Jesus and made him Lord of my life. Those watching by video stream, if you did ask the Lord to come into your heart and you ask him to touch you, I want to pray with you right now. In fact, I'm going to ask everybody to pray this prayer for those that are watching by video that's asked the Lord to come into their heart. Would everybody pray with me right now? Say, Father, I thank you for touching me today. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to cleanse me and make me whole. I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. I acknowledge that God raised Christ from the dead. And according to your word, I'm saved. I receive your salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're here this morning and you need a healing in your body, you need a touch from the Lord in any area of your life, you need a touch. Would you raise your hand and hold it up so I can pray for you? Father, I pray for every person that's got their hand up. But whether they need to be healed, whether they need an a emotional uh, touch, whatever it might be, God, I pray if 
that you'll touch them and deliver them. Heal them and set them free. Let the shackles fall. Let the chains fall. Because it's by your stripes, Lord, that we are saved, we're healed, we're set free. You paid the ultimate price. And Lord, touch each and every one who's got their hand up right now. By the power and by the anointing of God, in Jesus' name, whom the Lord sets free, is free indeed. But somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing this one time and then we'll be dismissed. How great is our God. Would somebody sing with me? Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing it again. Oh, thank you, Lord. How great, oh, how great is our God. Worship Him one more time. How great is our God. Won't you sing with me? Oh, yes, how great. How great is our God. How great is our God. How great. How great. Well, yes. How great is our God. Sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. How great. good we gotta do it again oh listen if you know he's a great god just sing with me right now how great oh yes how great is our god hallelujah Landon McDowell, where's uh, Landon McDowell? We all come down here. We want to lay hands on you guys. And they're going to be going back to Dominican Republic, right? Amen. You come down here. We're going to lay hands. I'm going to ask you all to pre reach out towards them. I'd like to have some elders down here. Amen. Joe, you and Carmela come down here. Let's lay hands on them. Hallelujah. Would y'all reach out and pray? These are our missionaries in the Dominican Republic. How long y'all been down there now, then? Four years? Twelve? Twelve years. Wow, been that long. Twelve years they've been ministering to the deaf. Not just children, to the deaf people in DR, in Dominican Republic. Tremendous ministry. Since the pandemic, they've been, this last year, they haven't been able to travel. They've been, they've been closed down there. They wouldn't let people in. They've been doing it by Zoom, by internet. They're going to go back down and establish their classes and get back to normal. Praise God. Can somebody say amen to that? Would you all pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we come. We ask you, O oh Lord, to anoint Lynn and McDowell as they go, God, and do the job that's set before them. Lord, they're anointed, called. You've got your hand upon them. Lord, use them mightily as they go down. There's not just teaching children involved, not just teaching adults, but God, they got to reestablish their home base. They got to put their apartment back together. They got to get their, <clears throat> their property aligned back up. So God, in Jesus' name, just touch them, anoint them, use them like never before. Oh Lord, let them walk, let them go there with confidence.
an assurance to know, God, that you are moving big in their life and the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost is resting upon them. Empower them with a brand new refreshing. Lord, like the first day that they went, like back in the beginning when they got the calling in their life, there was something deep stirred in their spirit. Stir it up again, God. Stir it up again that the anointing will flow like never before. And God, let this be a time of victory in their lives and lives touched and people will come and will give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said. Turn around and tell two or three people, I love you, I love you, I love you. And you can be dismissed.